Hello and welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill. Now this is the first video of 2021 so let me start by first of all wishing all my listeners and my followers a very happy and prosperous 2021 and also hopefully going to be a, a healthy 2021. I don't think anybody expected what we ended up with in 2020, hopefully with vaccines um, on the horizon that's going to be something that we can start to move on from and start to have a bit more of a normal life in the next few months. Hopefully, um, we look forward to that. But I'd like to thank folk for um, uh, the feedback you've given me regarding the channel. I've um, only started it about six months ago just for a, a bit of entertainment really and I've sort of got into um, to doing it and enjoying it and I've had some good feedback so um, appreciate that and I'll do my best to keep some uh, some interesting comment uh, content uh, coming for you. I'm not an expert, I'm just a hobbyist but um, hopefully some of it will give you a bit more of an insight into the kind of things uh, we can get up to when um, we're not allowed to do much else and even when we are for that matter. Okay, so this time I'm going to be um, doing a bit of a, a long-term review on this little beastie behind me, which is the Hantec uh, DSO 5102P, and it's an oscilloscope which I purchased uh, in uh, January 2020. Um, so I've had it a year, and I hoped to make some use of it, but I really didn't think I was going to get quite the amount of use out of it that I have. So what I want to do is um, have a look at the kind of things that uh, I've done with it, do a little bit of a, an explanation of the um, of what there is on it. There's plenty of reviews, and I'll I'll link put a few links down there to some of those reviews for you, uh, which are, uh, it's already been done by plenty of people, and they've made a better job of it than I would. Um, but what I do want to do is just show you what I think the bandwidth is. Um, I think it's quite reasonable and unashamedly this is going to be a, a positive review because I know it's not um, an expert's oscilloscope, I know it's only a beginner's uh, scope uh, but it's pretty much done everything I wanted of it, it's never let me down, um, it's been in use um, several times a week, um, sometimes uh, been switched on for several hours each day, it's worked without complaint and I've learned a great deal about um, about oscilloscopes and electronics along the way by using it. So let's have a look at some of the things I've done with it. Okay I'm going to start with um, what actually is quite a, in one sense an unscientific use of the instrument uh, and it wasn't one I was um, expecting to use but I've, it's come in very handy for checking the um, which, which of the leads on a, a capacitor is connected to the outer foil. Now for a lot of applications this probably doesn't matter too much but certainly some of the valve uh, radios that I've been working on um, uh, when I've replaced the capacitors um, a lot of the old capacitors came with a, a black line around the end which was connected to the outer foil and you might wonder why does that matter? Well um, there's an argument that says that if you connect the outer foil to the ground side uh, you're likely to reduce the amount of uh, interference and hum. So that's what I've been doing. And the unscientific method of being able to check this is simply by attaching a probe to one of the leads and just holding the capacitor in my fingers like that and then looking at the readout and uh, reading the millivolts that I've been getting and then swapping the lead onto the other one doing the same thing again and reading the millivolts and for most of these polyester capacitors it's very obvious uh, one of the leads has a much higher reading than the other and the one with the highest reading is the one that's nearest the outside so the, um, the one that's in, in effect having some capacitance from my fingers and is picking up the 50 hertz noise from that my body is, is picking up from all around me 50 hertz here in the UK 16 a lot of other parts of the world a lot of other parts of the world now it's a little harder to check on um, some capacitors than others but certainly this is one that I've actually put a black line around to, to mark which is the, the outer foil so that's been um, in one sense a very unscientific use of it and I'd got a radio to bits on the bench here and I just tried it one day when I was trying to replace a capacitor and it worked so I've since been making um, quite extensive use of that so Okay, uh, so some of the other things I've done with it, um, 
uh, early on uh, I started looking at how to do bowed plots and one of the first bowed plots that I did which is a uh, frequency um, against uh, against um, energy display so in other words a little bit like a spectrum analyzer I hadn't quite got the hang of, of getting the the scope synchroed um, so I was getting results that look a little bit like this um, but you can nonetheless see the, the shape of the, the filter uh, and later on I was able to um, to actually um, perfect the method and I was able to use the Felilec FY6900 signal generator behind me here and I was able to actually use channel 2 to produce a ramp waveform which I then used to control the sweep of channel 1. I fed channel 1 into the um, front end of the radio with a filter and I also took a a link off the um, ramp waveform of, from channel 2 and use that as an external external trigger for the scope and that allowed me to, to stabilize the boat plot um, as you can see here on this um, on this example. I also managed to get that to work on the Hantec um, 2D72 handheld scope um, and you can see the similar effect here I was able to use both channels and get that to work. No external trigger input on that scope but I was able to simply set the trigger on channel 2 and then view the, the display on channel 1 and I essentially got the, the same effect from that. So that worked well. I did some testing of uh, ESR of capacitors and also um, looked at uh, velocity factor of, of coax and there's some really excellent videos by W2 AEW Allen so if you, um, I'll put some links up there that you can uh, have a look at those videos but they're really excellent he is a true expert on this uh, and I've learned so much about um, what you can use a scope for by watching his videos so nice one uh, Alan that, that's really really good and as you saw from last week's video I uh, started making an effort to understand um, fast Fourier transforms which isn't something I've, I've been into um, and I've started learning about that and discovered the, the scope's um, capabilities are perhaps a little bit more than I expected even and here you can see uh, a fast Fourier transform display of a, a waveform passing through a, a tuned circuit OK so here we've got the front panel of the DSO 5102P and uh, as you can see it's a fairly conventionally laid out digital oscilloscope um, all the usual controls, two channels, external trigger various menus, USB port here to uh, capture images onto a USB stick there is a, also a USB port at the back for connecting to a PC so we'll switch on and uh, you can just see uh, how long she takes to boot um, it isn't particularly long And there we go, ready to, to rock and roll. Um, I quite like the, the buttons because when they're in use or when they're not in use they light up or not as the case may be. Um, sometimes change colour depending on the function. Um, but like a lot of uh, digital scopes one of the things that's really handy, for, certainly for a beginner, is, is the auto set button. Now I've got nothing feeding into it at the minute so what I'm going to do is just connect up a standard probe to channel 1 and then I'm going to hook up to the calibration point down the bottom right here I will put the earth on uh, and so straight away there appears to be there's something going on there but we're not sure what so we'll press auto set let it work away and as you can see it's produced a a square wave which is indeed what the calibration point is um, is putting out and then you can adjust the um, calibration using the little vertical capacitor in the probe there and we could in fact just tidy that, that edge up um, so if we want to see a single cycle of that wave which is probably more useful for, for calibration we can do we can increase the amplitude a little bit and bring that down so you can see the top and that's the bit we would be wanting to tweak from a compensation point of view I won't be bothering doing that now but one of the things that's very useful when you're completely new to it is the ability to just press the button and let the scope sort out what it thinks is the best 
um, point of view and from there you can then start learning what the controls do and that's certainly something that's helped me. I have to say my completely analog scope that doesn't have any automation has also been a very handy tool because that's allowed me to, to learn about how to set up manually which is another another thing um, and it's a handy skill to have but if you're new to it and you want to learn about electronics this kind of thing is great. Another thing on here which is particularly good is the ability uh, when you want to to just return the scope to its normal settings so you've got a default setup button just here and when you do that it just puts the scope back to default setup so if you've had all sorts of settings on the go suddenly you can go back to exactly where you were at the startup to give you a, a base point to start from which I think is, is particularly good so on the horizontal menu um, we've got various choices we can also have a second window and what you're viewing in the main window is that little bit there but it's also capturing these bits here um, so if you've got a, a wave let's just Let's just do auto set again there, just capturing the square wave. Uh, and then we'll call up the horizontal menu, we'll turn on the minor window. Um, and as you can see, that's what you'd see in the main display, which is that little bit captured there between the red lines. But that's what the scope is actually sampling. Um, and What's quite handy about that is if you want to do some, some more work on let's, let's say you wanted to display the, the fast Fourier transform display of that, if you pop onto the math menu and then hop down to FFT, there, we're getting the FFT display but we're still getting the conventional um, voltage and time display that you would get on a normal scope and the peaks that you can see there are the um, the fundamental and the harmonics of that um, as it tails off into the into the distance. Um, again that's that's quite a nice facility and unashamedly I'm not um, an expert by a very very long way and I think for a beginner this is great um, because it just allows you to, to learn and play and I'm sure there's a few odd little bits that are a bit confusing but hey you know um, I've never had anything better so um, actually I don't know uh, what, what's better to be perfectly honest so we'll turn maths off we'll go back to channel 1 uh, get back to um, major window there um, so yeah go back to factory setup again and now we've got default setup and then we can do auto set and she just does the work for you and if you want to pause the scope and look exactly at the waveform you can do that um, you can do that with the wave frozen in time so you can view the very top of there um, and start it running again so yeah uh, I like it um, I like it very much I didn't expect to use it anywhere near as much as I have but I don't think any of us expected to spend quite so much time at home as we have in, in 2020 but um, yeah uh, nice machine I'm rather pleased with it okay what we'll now do is we'll have a look at, um, at the bandwidth and see if it really is what it claims to be which is supposedly a hundred megahertz scope okay so here you are looking at the um, Antec TSO 5102P display and that's uh, as you can see from the bottom there that's a 10 megahertz signal and it's about uh, uh, 1 volt peak to peak according to the measurements and I don't have a, a signal generator as such that is capable of running up to um, 100 megahertz to check the bandwidth out so what I'm actually using is my uh, tiny SA which is capable of outputting signals um, considerably further up than uh, 100 megahertz so I'm going to just uh, use that as a source so you can see at the moment just in the display there we've got um, 10 megahertz at minus 15 dBm um, and I'm now going to increase the frequency up to 50 megahertz you have to do it by manual entry as you can see um, so that's 50 megahertz and as you can see scope still um, saying we're at 50 megahertz and we're at about 
985 um, millivolts so just down a little bit uh, I'd expect the 3 d B down point to be about well about 0 0.71 volts so 710 millivolts something like that so that's at 50 megahertz so let's now up it to 80 megahertz see what we get I'm at 824 millivolts. I'm going to just increase the time base a little so you can see the display a little better. Um, but we're still well inside the 3 dB down point at 80 megahertz. Let's try 90. Okay, there's 90 megahertz. And again, about 960 millivolts. And if we go up to 100 megahertz. Well, there she is. Uh, a little bit of wobble on the display, but not too much. And as you can see, about 900 and I don't know, about 930 something like that millivolts. So well inside the 3 dB down point. Assuming, of course, that my tiny SA is outputting a, uh, a similar level signal um, as we increase the frequency, I would expect it, to, if anything, to produce be producing uh, slightly less power as the frequency increases. So. Uh, Hopefully that is a reasonably good check of the uh, of the scope's bandwidth. Now, I won't put you through too much more of this, but if I now go up to 120 megahertz, um, we're at about well, about 750 millivolts there. So even and our display's wobbling a little bit more now, but we're well above the stated 100 megahertz, so it's doing okay. And I reckon that. Um, it's still reasonable at about 125 megahertz, which is there, and the display is hovering about between about well between between about 650 and about 720. So if we go back to um, 120 megahertz, um, we're definitely above the um, 0.71 volts there, so we're definitely above the 3 dB point. So certainly the scope's capable of um, of showing us waveforms up to uh, 100 megahertz, which is what's stated on the tin. So I think that's pretty good. Okay, well hopefully you've um, got a bit of a, an idea what I've managed to do with my uh, 2D72, and there's lots of scopes of a similar spec out there. Um, the Hantec. I paid £175 for it um, from Banggood and uh, I have to say I've had um, no trouble at all with it, it it's, works really well and I'm um, very pleased with my purchase so hopefully I'm going to get a few more years use out of it. Right, that's probably quite enough on um, the DSO 5102P, I'm, there's absolutely loads of videos out there on that on this scope so I would encourage you to look at those too. Um, thanks very much for watching, first video of uh, 2021. Um, as I said at the beginning, wish you a happy and a, a healthy uh, 2021 and let's hope it's a very different year to, to 2020. Thanks very much for watching. Um, thumbs up would be great if you've enjoyed it. If not, you can click the thumbs down. Either way, would appreciate it if you could subscribe as well. That would help me and look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thanks for watching.